we are facing several convergent crises, and one of them is the possibility of nuclear war within the next year, because there is a strong possibility that President Bush and Vice President Cheney will attack Iran. We've learned for while they're in office, there's reason they may not. Maybe it's, my friends say, as much as a third, or maybe a half, that they will not attack Iran, since after all, the military are opposed to it, and the Secretary of State is opposed, and the Secretary of Defense is opposed, and it's crazy. So it would be disastrous and catastrophic, very obviously. So maybe it won't happen, despite the fact that the President and the Vice President are by all accounts determined to bring about regime change by an air attack in Iran while they are in office. Now, we do have, in principle, an obstacle to their carrying out that attack, which is Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution, which says that it's the Congress that shall declare war. But there isn't going to be a declaration of war here. The principle of that article was that no one man or woman should have the power or authority to launch war when we have not been attacked and are not being threatened, as we are not by Iran, as we were not by Iraq. But Iraq did get attacked, of course. The idea was that that decision should be made by a collectivity. Obviously, there's no guarantee of good judgment in a collection of people or a nation of people. And actually, if Congress unanimously declared war on Iran, that wouldn't make it a legal war, since the UN Charter, which is supreme law of the land, being a ratified treaty of this country since 1945, which declares that uh, it is a crime against the peace to wage war against a country that is not attacking you at this moment and has not been declared by the Security Council, which of course was not the case with Iraq and will not be the case in Iran, uh, to launch such an attack, a so-called preemptive or preventive attack, uh, would be a crime of aggression, the crime for which people were hanged at Nuremberg and in the Tokyo trials. That will not happen, of course, uh, to our uh, officials. They will not be in the dock, and not only because they refuse to ratify or uh, sign the International Criminal Court, the uh, reason given for not signing that, or for unsigning it actually, under Bush, was that to protect our low-level officers and enlisted men from possible prosecution. <coughs> they did that, as I recall, in the summer of 2001. We now know that they were already planning on regime change in Iraq by military action. We know that from Secretary of Treasury Paul O'Neill, uh, who tells us in a memoir of 2004 that uh, the subject of the first National Security Council meeting, which he attended, was what he understood to be a decision already taken by the president to invade Iraq, and the question only was when and under what pretense. 9-11 gave him what he regarded as a justification, although the chief of counterterrorism in the White House, Richard Clark, tells us in his memoir of 2004, a few months after O'Neill, that he informed the president on September 12th that Iraq had had nothing to do with 9-11. And he informed Secretary of Defense Rumsfeld of that. And Rumsfeld said, and he said, uh, Osama bin Laden did this. He's based in Afghanistan. Rumsfeld said, but there are no good targets in Afghanistan. And as we now know, that was true in a sense. I mean, Osama was there, but Osama is still in Afghanistan or Pakistan and on the borders, our ally, Pakistan. <clears throat> So Osama is not a good target, it would appear. But uh, targets in Iraq were what called for uh, action. So Clark then tells us that his, the position he informed them was it was not just that uh, Iraq was the wrong country to attack, but that to attack Iraq, a Muslim country filled with oil, 
that had not attacked us would strengthen Al-Qaeda to such an extent that we would never, ever be able to reduce its strength. The war on terrorism of which Richard Clark was the chief, he, by the way, was assigned by Condi Rice to take the chair and to, to run, to coordinate the response in Washington to 9-11.